Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Edward for our celebration of the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before we begin, we ask that you please silence your cell phones. Thank you. Our presider today is Father Rick. Please join us in singing our gathering song, number 553, Come, Now is the Time for Worship. 553. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we come this morning to worship, to raise our voices to God in thanks and praise, we first take a moment to pause and reflect on those times that we've sinned, so that we might prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you who temper justice with love, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you bid us to seek forgiveness of our sins and reconciliation to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our Savior. You are our risen Redeemer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask anything of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king, to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, 
We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory, glory to you o lord jesus said to his disciples the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls when he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. So good morning. Good morning. So I have a couple, couple of questions before we get started. Um, does anybody not know what a QR code is? Anybody not know what a QR code is? See, I told you, everybody. Be, <laughs> be honest, who doesn't know what a QR code is? Who's never used a QR code? Okay. Yeah, okay, so the QR codes are those little squares, the symbols that you find on lots of things. They're on, they're on um, the posters for our capital campaign, and they're also on the posters for the Catholic C CSA. CSA. Uh, oh, sorry, it's in the other room. Yeah, and Father Rick asked me to remind people that we are a little bit behind on our CSA pledges, and so think about contributing there. But yeah, they're the things that you put, you know, you, you take a picture with your camera and it gives you a link to stuff. Okay, you'll find out why I said this a little later. The other thing is, everybody survived the storm yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, it was 
by us, we just lost a few branches and stuff that we had to move out of the driveway. But yeah, boy, there were some big trees and branches and limbs down all over the place. You know, when I looked at the bulletin last night and I saw this picture, if you look really close, you can see that there's a treasure hidden there. But what I thought is, these are the people who spent all day cleaning up after the storm, just lying there, unable to move because they worked so hard. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Everybody was supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, so um, before we do start, I'd like to give a short commercial. In the homily today, we'll talk about commandments and Christ gave the apostles several commandments before he rose to heaven. One is to love one another. The other, specifically to Peter, is feed my sheep. And the final one is go and make disciples. In the bulletin this weekend and in a flock note that was sent out earlier this week, you'll find a flyer about registering your children for children's faith formation. Looks like this, and it's in the bulletin, and you should have gotten it in the flock note. Um, if you have kids, the flyer is for you. If you know someone who has kids, the flyer is for you too, so please pass it on. But there's also a sheet in there saying that we need a couple of people to help out this year as catechists. Now, before you clamp your ear, hands over your ears, we have at least one catechist already for every class, and there's only one or two where we need additional catechists. Um, new catechists are paired with experienced catechists, so it's not like you'd be thrown to the wolves. And actually, our kids are more like the sheep of the flock that Jesus told Peter to feed. You don't need a degree in theology to be a good catechist, just a desire to go and make disciples. Now, I bet a lot of you are thinking, I don't need to look into this. Somebody more qualified than I will step up. Unfortunately, if everyone thinks that way, then nobody will step forward. So please take a look at the flyer and let us know of your interest. Now, if you notice the flyer about the catechist, there is a QR code on there. And... I mentioned to my daughters that I was going to put that on, and they seemed incredulous that I would be able to do that. So show them, click on it, and show them that you can teach an old dog new tricks. Okay, so the gospel has a couple of parables that we ought to talk about. Parables are really neat things. They tell a story, but the message that they're trying to get across goes much deeper deeper than just the story. There's often many layers of interpretation. In a way, they're kind of like the Mass, the Mass that we're celebrating right now, which we can see in, in the rites and the, and the rituals and the words that take place, but the real meaning goes much deeper. We need to understand it in an allegorical manner. But before we get to the parables, we really need to talk about that great first reading that comes from 1 Kings. And to do that, we need to start way back at the beginning of the Bible in the first couple chapters of Genesis. Remember the story of Adam and Eve? God gave them a command to not eat the fruit of a certain tree. It wasn't like God was testing Adam and Eve. It wasn't like he was showing them who was boss. That was pretty clear, even without the do not eat thing. God told Adam and Eve not to eat of the certain tree, because if they did, there would be consequences. That certain tree. Here's what God said. You are free to eat from any of the trees of the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. From that you shall not eat. When you eat from it, you shall die. When I was rereading this this morning, I thought, when you eat from it, God knew that Adam and Eve were going to succumb to temptation and do that. 
When you eat from it, you shall die. And remember what the servant the serpent told them? God knows well when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like gods who know good and evil. Eating that fruit, taking upon themselves, deciding what was good and what was evil, deciding that they'd stop listening to God and try to become gods themselves. That's what ultimately caused them to be sent out of the garden. Not so much that they disobeyed God, but that they made their decision to place their judgment of right and wrong, of good and evil, of just and unjust, of worthy and unworthy, of moral and immoral, to make their judgment of those things more important than God's guidance, his order. That made them unable to live in the garden. It was their turning away from God's teaching of right and wrong and inserting their own that brought about death and hardship and pain. And you know, that's still the case today when we refuse to heed God's guideposts for a good life. The commandments, both explicit and implicit in the Bible, and especially Christ's teachings. The commandments and the church's unwavering teaching of them. When you think about it, most little kids have a pretty good idea of right and wrong. It's built into us. It's the natural law that is part of who we are, created in God's image and likeness. But sometimes people try to convince the innocent that what's bad is good, what's harmful is desirable. Sometimes a person's own desire for wealth or power or control or adulation leads them to accept evil as the way to get what they want. And sometimes I think people choose what is wrong just to prove that no one, human or godly, is going to tell them what they can or can't do. Solomon, in the first reading, recognizes that tendency to turn away from God's teaching of good and evil and the terrible harm that it can cause. So what does Solomon pray for? Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. And how does God answer? Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And you know what? I'm convinced that God will respond to us in exactly the same way if we ask the same thing. Perhaps the acceptance of God's teaching of right and wrong is the field containing the treasure in, God's, in the gospel parable. Perhaps the pearl of great wealth is the desire to follow Christ's teachings. Perhaps that object of great value is conforming our understanding of good and evil to the gospel message. As St. Paul says in the second reading, to be conformed to the image of God's Son. Now the gospel ends with a warning, a pretty serious warning, that there are consequences for not doing that. Consequences for thinking that we are the ones to determine right and wrong. Consequences for turning away from doing good and choosing to do evil. Consequences, yes, but consequences tempered with love. It's that same Peter who Christ instructed to feed his sheep, that same Peter who not long before that had denied Christ. But Peter kept trying, and the Lord kept bringing him back. As we continue our celebration of Mass today, the celebration of the Eucharist, 
in which we are conformed to Christ in the most intimate way, may we pray that God show us the treasure, show us the pearl, and once we found them, to allow ourselves to be conformed to them and to have the courage to share them with others. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and, and I, I look, look forward, forward to, to the, the resurrection, resurrection of the, of the dead, dead and the, the life, life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As we open our hearts and strive to conform our will to God's and to our lives to God's commands, we offer up our prayers and petitions. For our church, which asks for God's blessing in all that it does, may it receive the gifts necessary to bring the gospel to all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders throughout the world, that they, like Solomon, may see truth and justice and govern their people with an understanding heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer because of the extreme heat and storms, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the pilgrims to World Youth Day from the Diocese of Gary and from around the world, May their experience be faith-filled and uplifting, and may they return from their journeys in safety. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in death, for Mark Myers, whose funeral will be this Monday, that they may share in the eternal life promised by Jesus to those who follow him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Floyd and Stella Clay, whom we remember in a special way at this liturgy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, hear the prayers we humbly offer to you and answer them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our preparation hymn is uh, Seek, your, Seek Ye First. It's number 445. Four, four, five.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my roof, but only Lord, say the, the word, word and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. Our communion hymn will be number 438, Be Not Afraid, 438.
St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. And our vocation prayer. God, our Father, you made each of us to use our gifts in the body of Christ. We ask that you inspire young people whom you call to priesthood and consecrated life to courageously follow your will. Send workers into your great harvest so that the gospel is preached, the poor are served with love, the suffering are comforted, and your people are strengthened by the sacraments. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray.
we have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A few announcements this morning. Script orders are due this weekend. The pickup will be next weekend. Uh, bunco tickets are for sale after Mass this weekend in the vestibule. I think the Bunco um, uh, uh, tournament game, whatever, uh, however we describe it, is August 13th here at St. Edward. Um, this is the uh, fifth uh, Sunday of the month, so everyone is invited. The Knights of Columbus will be leading the rosary after all Masses this weekend. So again, we ask if, uh, if you're going to uh, be conversing with your uh, friends and neighbors, please take that outside. It's pleasant out this morning, and so the, the rosary can begin. Also, I will be gone from this afternoon through Thursday evening. I will be back in time for First Friday and First Saturday. First Saturday, just for those who go, my, I plan on starting confessions at 8 a.m., starting early. The reason is, uh, on that first Saturday of August, the traveling rosary, a family rosary for life, will be returning to St. Edward. So we'll have visitors joining us from different parts of the diocese for the 9 a.m. Mass Saturday morning. And then there will be, uh, weather permitting, uh, the rosary service out at our, outside at our Marian Grotto. See the bulletin for more details. Uh, lastly, uh, it's a little bit of a, a bittersweet day uh, as uh, we are saying goodbye to uh, a member of our music ministry choir, Marilyn Roach. Uh, Marilyn has been with us, uh, I believe, for just about as long as David has been with us, correct? Yeah. Truth be told, she followed David over from St. Irenaeus <laughs> to here because David was just so good, she didn't want to not have uh, have choir without David. But Marilyn, in her time here, uh, has helped uh, at the nursing homes, uh, bringing a portable keyboard playing from time to time. Um, she's played at daily mass uh, from time to time, and of course, uh, on the weekend. Uh, she's moving to the volunteer state, which is? Tennessee. Tennessee, yes. Uh, so when we're freezing at 10 below zero and she has 40 degrees, uh, she's not going to be missing us. <laughs> um, but Marilyn, thank you for all your, uh, your uh, uh, contributions. <laughs> and most of all, for your beautiful heart that loves the Lord and we know uh, loves St. Edward Parish as well. Uh, we uh, uh, send you with our prayers. We know you'll find a nice parish down there in Tennessee who will embrace and welcome you with open arms. Thank you again, Marilyn. Thank you, Father. Last thing is, um, on the back of the bulletin, if you didn't get all of these announcements, there's a QR code. <laughs> you can, uh, actually, I think it's a Catholic singles dating site, so probably don't, unless you're a Catholic single, don't go on that code. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing hymn is number 547, O God, Beyond All Praising, 547. <laughs>